kept the BlackBerry. Michelle, do you want to slate that for me? Um, Michelle Monet, let's see, uh, mindfood.com. You found a race. Okay. Okay, um, congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Um, watching it, it made me really miss, you know, newspapers, pens. You don't read a newspaper? Well, I'm reading it online, like probably you are. No, I don't. I, I actually removed all of that stuff. I don't. I, I uh, get a hard newspaper in the morning, and there, I, for a very specific reason. I had on my phone every update, you know, I had three or four news sources that were constantly sending me updates. I had, I was on newsletters that were sending me the latest, and I realized I was scanning them but not reading anything. All they were doing was cluttering up my attention span. I wasn't being informed by them. I was only being informed that they were being sent to me. So I, I took them off of all of my phone. Actually, I read this article by Aziz Ansari, who's done the same oh, thing. Yeah. And so the way I get my news now is I listen to, when I'm in radio listening positions, I listen to the radio all day long, the National Public Radio. I read the New York Times from cover to cover every morning. And sometimes, more often, not every night, but on occasionally at night, I will tune in one of those kind of like half hour or one hour wrap up of the day's events, but I don't even do that all the time because knowing everything that's going on is not nearly as important, I think, as considering the important things that are going on. And there's a lot of stuff that isn't going to affect me in the least until it's gone through a farther place where more examination of it can happen. Well, as opposed to this era, there's a lot of misinformation now, and whether you want to... There's a lot of lies out there. There's a, lot, well, there's a lot of lying out there, but there's always been lying out there. Always has been. When they wrote the Constitution of the United States, there were newspapers in Boston that told opposite t sides of the same story, and, and there were lies. That's not the point. The point there's always been there's always been lies. I mean, uh, you know, there, even there's you know, like Colonel McCormick who ran the Chicago Tribune for all those times. He was a nut, you know. But and he and he had the powers of a newspaper that could uh, put forward. All. Henry Ford ran his own newspapers, and th those were like cockamamie anti-Semitic rants. So that stuff has always existed. What has never existed in the United States is the power given to somebody to stop somebody from publishing. You can hate every news site on, that, you, that will come across it. You don't get to put together a, 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 a politician in your pocket to shut it down and keep it from having the, uh, the freedom, to, uh, freedom to publish. That's what The Post, I think, is about much more than whether or not it's fake news. It's always been fake news, always will be. But it's, it's obviously a very timely subject now. Well, because we had uh, Richard Nixon was the White House, and he tried to stop, he tried to... He took on the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. He said, you can't do that. And not only did he do it with uh, the Pentagon Papers in 1970, he certainly did it from 1972 to 1970, the summer of 1974, when he kept saying all the stuff about uh, Watergate never happened. They're lying, they're making it up, it's manufactured, it's not true. Well, it was true. And they stepped with it, and guess what? You don't get to monkey around with uh, the, we don't have an America without a First Amendment. There's a reason freedom of speech and freedom of the press were the first thing those guys put down on paper. The other stuff was important too, but they, they weren't the first. Um, and uh, that has defined who we are as Americans and it's, it's why we've got uh, the greatest country in the world. Thanks. I'm allowed to say that, aren't I? I think you are. 